Welcome back. So I've been here for a couple of weeks now and I haven't even talked about what the North Node is in astrology. Now, for those of you who know Tour de Soul, my business, you know that this is blasphemy. I have based so much of my practice around the knowledge of my North Node. In fact, knowing and understanding my North Node sign and house placement is what led me to start this business in the first place. Now, I first learned about this concept through Dara Dubinet, who I discovered on the To Be Magnetic podcast with Lacey Phillips. And, you know, I've always resonated with my astrology, my birth chart. Um, I very much identify with my sun sign of being a Pisces. I understand my rising sign in Virgo, and I like to present myself in a clean cut manner, which is very typical of the Virgo rising sign mass, despite the fact that underneath that, my Pisces is very free flowing and intuitive, a little bit hippie. Um, so I've always resonated with everything to do with my chart. My moon in Aquarius makes me emotionally detached, but very strongly um, activated by issues of fairness, uh, whether it's a humanitarian or animal rights causes will actually bring up emotion for me more than my own personal matters. So all that to say that the more I've known about my birth chart and had it analyzed by professional astrologers, the more convinced I have been about there being something to astrology, even though I'm the last one who is going to try and explain it to you. I have my theory of where it fits in with past lives and karma, but let me just leave that aside for now. I give this little prelude just to say that while I've always agreed with everything I've heard about my birth chart, I haven't necessarily known how helpful it is, right? It's kind of like when you get a tarot reading, which is simply predictive, which is not how I read cards for my clients and also a subject for another video. But I thought, okay, this is how we are. What do we do about it? And that is why I resonated so strongly with the North Node aspect of my chart. Because when I realized that the North Node is your soul's calling, it's the direction your soul wants to take and grow into in this lifetime, and your South Node represents where you've been, your old habits and karma and automatisms that you're just sort of used to doing and you don't think about anymore that no longer serve you. When I realized that this was a progression, that our lives began in our self node karma that we bring in from past lives and that we move into our north node purpose in this lifetime, I got very excited because it was an active process. It is an active process. We are meant to align with our north node activities and interests and habits and perspectives every day. Mine has become so integrated into my modus operandi and how I conduct myself in my life that on a day-to-day -day basis, I can evaluate how good and integrated and on track I feel based on how much I'm in my North Node. It's quite outstanding. If I feel a little bit off, I look at, okay, how am I playing in my self node. If I feel really on, I can usually attribute it to having invested my time and energy in my north node activities. Okay, so what is your north node? So everybody has a north node in their chart the same way they have a planet. Uh, they have Pluto in a sign and in a house, they have Mars in a sign and in a house. If you've ever looked at your birth chart before, it's like a wheel. And on the side, usually you can get your chart done on astro.com for free with the birth chart generator. On the side, you'll see listed the different planets you have and what signs they're in. And then on the wheel, you can see the, oh, like it's like pieces of a pie, like a pie chart. You'll see the different houses from one to 12 and which planets are in which houses. Now the North Node is not exactly a planet, but it is in a house. And just like the way we say our northern star, right? The north node is the direction you're pointing in. It is where you're headed. And 
this is going to tie into what I was saying at the beginning about how I believe astrology ties into past lives. I do have this inclination to believe in past lives because I feel that I've had memories of previous iterations of myself. I've had these kind of visceral deja vu moments that are not from this lifetime, that are not in my um, current racial, geographical, socio-historical context that feel very real to me. So if we accept astrology and past lives, the way that I see it is your soul is in the astral plane, sound like to call it, between incarnations. And your soul will choose what moment to come into this world, choose the parents based on what it is that it needs to learn in this lifetime. So if we look at the logic of astrology, we can choose the exact moment that we are conceived and we come into this earth based on the kind of makeup we want to have in our personalities, our characteristics, our interests, our affinities, the things that we don't agree with. And we're not just coming in ready-made. We're coming in with this arc that we want to make. We want to grow. Like, the point of having many lifetimes is so we can make this progression from being a young soul to an old soul. So I, I just, I stalled because I'm thinking of my favorite past life psychic. I think it's Alistair McLeod, but I always say his name wrong and then I, I Google it and it's like the name of an author. Alistair, I'll link him below and um, get it right. So he suggests that we start off as this very young soul and we move into this wiser, evolved soul. So the logic of the past lives is that our self node is something that we're already familiar with. It's what we have lived, what personality traits and experiences that we have relied on, we have built our identity around. And there's a good reason for that. It's because whatever we experience in a past life, it gave us certain coping mechanisms and skills, and that is what we needed to survive or thrive in those circumstances. But if we were all just to stay in our rigid singular perspective, we would never grow. That's why we are in relationship with others to help us take, stay out of, get out of this kind of crystallized way of being and to learn to adapt and empathize with alternate experiences of things. So, your north node is an alternate experience of things than the one that you've been living. It's in the opposite sign from your south node, so every sign has an opposite. Pisces and Virgo are opposites, um, Taurus and Scorpio are opposites, and like I said before, you know, our soul comes in, it chooses these different configurations about our personalities, but, you know, we're not just meant to be um, passive in our our makeup right we're meant to grow and this is why i love the north node so much because this is where we can focus our growth so as i've said your north node will appear on your chart as a sign and a house placement your south node will be in the opposite sign and the opposite house placement that corresponds with the sign so every house has its corresponding sign. Let me get specific about mine and that way you can understand how this works a little bit. So my north node is in the sign of Taurus. Even though my sun sign, like when people ask you what your sign is, my sign is normally Pisces. That's my sun sign. And my north node sign is Taurus. And Taurus is in the eighth house in my case. So the eighth house is ruled by the sign of Scorpio, which is linked to the planet Pluto. So what does that mean? Well, let me start by telling you a little anecdote. So when I first discovered this concept, I was living in a loft that my boyfriend is the owner of. He's paying a mortgage on it. And I was in the process of discovering myself. I had a couple of different entrepreneurial endeavors and I was doing a lot of soul searching because I had what I thought were really incredible projects and they just didn't seem to come to fruition. I felt like I was doing the smart thing and trying to build these businesses 
and they just not were not taking off. And so I started to get really introspective and devote a lot of time to spiritual work on myself as I had in other periods of my life. Now this in itself didn't seem to bring a solution. I did establish my connection to spirit. I learned how to read tarot. I developed a morning ritual for self-healing. All of these things would eventually really serve me, but they weren't paying the bills and that was putting an enormous amount of stress on my spirit. So one day I looked up a video on Taurus North Node. I didn't have a lot of money, but I, I found out what mine was. I couldn't afford the Dara Dubina courses at the time. And I looked at this video and it said, stop watching this video and get to work. Your Taurus North Node means you need to get work, you need to make money, you need to be financially self-reliant. So I was like, oh gosh, okay, I know I felt the shame. Um, this is what Dara Dubinet calls the self-node cringe when you catch yourself in these self-node behaviors. And I was like, yeah, I can see how, you know, I've become dependent on my partner's financial stability and I'm, you know, getting a bit lost in my spirituality and I need to get more grounded and practical and I need to be more financially self-reliant if I'm going to come into my abundance, but how do I do it? So I thought I had it all figured out. I just need to focus on money and materialism and all of that. And a lot of other things made sense too. It talked about how my Scorpio South node was all about these intense tumultuous relationships relating to, you know, addiction and, and psychosexual drama and intensity. And those really define the relationships of my younger years, my teen years and my twenties. I mean, I had just come out of a decade and a half of very intense relationships romantically that had basically taken over my life and they were very much linked with a certain lifestyle of you know intoxication and so over the last couple of years since i had turned 30 i had been gent gently uh, releasing anything that was drama fueled or too intense uh, my relationship with my partner was much more grounded much more stable much more in the taurus north node vibe same thing with my partner. He was, he's also a Taurus North Node and his previous relationships had also been fueled by, you know, jealousy and drama. And both of us were so eager just to find something calm and easy and stable. So we did, and we found that together. So both of us were on track with our Taurus North Node in love. He was on track with his Taurus North Node in terms of stability as well. Financially, he had built his business and his career. He invested in property. All of that was great. Now, this is where it got a little more complicated because when I found out what house my North Node was in, in the eighth house, I discovered that the eighth house is ruled by Scorpio. And Scorpio is my South Node. So how could I be moving towards a house placement that is the opposite of where I'm supposed to be? So to give you context about what the house placement means, your North Node sign is what you're meant to do in this lifetime, who you're meant to become. Your house placement is in what area is this going to play itself out? Is there like a theme or nuance there that we can add to what you're meant to do? What is the focus of this purpose? And the eighth house is about shared resources, which is, you know, seemingly contradictory with the Taurus North Node mission to be financially self-reliant, but we'll come back to that in a second. It's about spiritual transformation, death, sex, and rebirth. It's about metaphysical, esoteric, being psychic, being highly intuitive, being a healer, and helping people reach um, their own personal, deep psychological transformation. Okay, so for a while, I battled with this. I was like, okay, I'm supposed to be financially self-reliant, but embrace sharing resources with others confusing. I'm supposed to be um, very grounded and earthy and not get lost in the metaphysical, instead focusing on the material realm, you know, which is, you know, money and um, stability and earthly pleasures like material things and beauty and luxury. But I'm also supposed to be deep in psychological, psychic, metaphysical healing and transformation and deeper truths and so for a while i was confused about this until i realized that the work that i was starting to do as i worked through my north node was actually perfectly aligned with this so 
as I was coming into my North Node, I realized, okay, I might not know exactly what I'm going to do as a career, but I was on my way to Costa Rica for two months. And I knew that I had a, a, a gift at reading tarot, at giving people intuitive guidance. I hadn't only done it in the context of tarot. I used to spend hours and hours a day giving people advice in my life. And it was almost compulsive and it, and it had gotten a little out of balance because then I would resent it in the end. I wouldn't get my own work done and I would spend a lot of time counseling and advising others and not taking care of my own material reality. So in the spirit of focusing on my Taurus North Node, when I got to Costa Rica for the trip that was already planned, I decided to start charging for my tarot readings because this just seemed like the most immediate way to monetize something that I was already doing, which is giving people readings and giving them intuitive guidance. It really worked. It actually took off quite quickly by word of mouth and people sharing their feedback on Instagram. So I started to build the business around this. And then when I discovered that the eighth house placement was to do with the spirituality and, uh, you know, being a medium and being a healer and being able to read people and help inspire transformation and rebirth in them, I realized that toward the soul, was the most perfect marriage of my North Node sign of house placement. I could go deep into spirituality and psychological transformation and use my intuitive power to bring about change in other people. I could do that as long as I was using it to build my financial and material stability on the earthly plane through entrepreneurship. So this was really exciting, inspiring to me. And now to this day, you know, I do my own spiritual work in the morning as an alignment practice, my morning ritual, which I'll be talking about at length. But I do that as a way to tune my instrument so that I can use that to work. And most of the rest of the day I spend working and I'm not just like lost in my own um, psychological, spiritual meandering. So that's really interesting. That's the first way that they marry. The second thing that's really interesting is as I develop my own management of resources, the more I get myself organized financially and become realistic of what I can afford and doing my bookkeeping and really getting in touch with the material reality, charging what I'm worth, you know, pouring this energy into my business, I also need to be at peace with accepting help and resources from others. So to give you context, as a child, I was a child actor and I always had this really strong pull and desire in me to be a provider. I was like a 10 year old, 12 year old baller. I was um, taking people on vacations, you know, buying great gifts for people. I was able to, you know, spend whatever I needed to for trips and experiences very young because I had quite a deal of success in acting in TV and film. Acting was not what gave me the desire to be a provider. I had it as a child. It came in with me like, it was like a memory. I just wanted to be able to provide for other people. And I wouldn't say greed, but I had a very strong desire for wealth and influence and owning things. And, you know, was very into shopping and, um, acquiring possessions. Now that is very typical of the South node in the second house, because the second house is very much, it's ruled by Taurus and it's very much like nice things and wanting your own money and wanting possession of things and, um, owning them, maybe having a property or just having lots of belongings or money. So that was a very strong desire when I was younger, so much so that when I got older and I was less interested in material possessions, I used to think like, why don't I care about shopping anymore or clothes? You know, when I was a kid, I wanted to be a designer. I loved fashion so much. Why don't I care about acquiring these things as much as when I was younger? And also, you know, why am I not making the money I was when I was younger? It was confusing to me that as a child and teenager, I could rely almost entirely on my own finances. And here I was, in my thirties and I had to accept help from others, whether it was my partner or my parents, it was just the universe seemed to kind of bring me these resources. And an astrologer helped explain this to me. She's like, do you care about being rich in 
financial dollars or are you okay with being rich in resources? Now, I'll be perfectly honest, my second house, house south node and my Taurus north node would like to have the actual numbers in the bank, that security, that stability. But I have been rich in resources for years. I mean, a lot of people think that I'm lucky. I seem to be able to manifest conditions that are beyond what one would think I could afford with my actual income. When I was working in contemporary art galleries, um, I used to have the Instagram handle broke socialite because my life was so uh, lavish and luxurious. I would travel a ton. I would get invited to these nice events. I, you know, seemed to have access to this world that was far beyond the reach of what I could actually afford, but these opportunities would kind of come to me circumstantially. And I felt a lot of guilt and shame around that because my second house self node wanted to be the one that made it happen. I wanted to make it on my own back to earn it to show that I could do it on my own and I didn't need any help from anybody. So as I approached the age of 30, which is when you start to move into your North Node, I had that lesson of being like, okay, I need to start to learn to accept help and not feel shame about it. I had many years of being financially independent when most people were not, you know, as a kid, as a teen and in my 20s. And in my later 20s when I was doing my master's, it was the first time I had to take a loan and I had to borrow some money from my father um, to try and support finishing my thesis. Now I had privilege that I was able to get the loan and to get some of this help, but it was really uncomfortable for me. Like it was something shameful um, or dis disgusting. You know, it's, it's, I actually still kind of struggle with it, but I've learned that my eighth house is as long as I'm working hard to be financially self-reliant and investing a lot in my business and in my work, then I should also embrace the sharing of resources that is part of my Dharma. So this brings me to where I am right now. This is the beautiful loft of my neighbors, um, this incredible family that we've gotten really close to throughout this pandemic in our little bubble. And I have had two such opportunities in the last year, since I came back to Montreal from Costa Rica, where both of my neighbors who I love very dearly on our floor where we live, and it's a loft building, they have both been going on vacations and they both needed some kind of assistance for me. In one case, it was um, taking care of their plants. And in the other case, it was taking care of their cat, not taking care of, but just coming to check in on them, uh, on the animal. And in exchange, I have access to these spaces for my work, which is really great because my boyfriend and I live in a loft together and it's an open space and we both work at home. So we're often navigating our scheduling so that you know our meetings are not at the same time, so we have silence and all of that. So it's been incredibly luxurious to have these amazing spaces that are so beautiful that I don't really know anyone who has an office for one person <laughs> as, as stunning as these spaces are. And I've had access to them um, for free. I've manifested that in exchange for offering them a service. By the way, a lot of you have commented on the amazing backgrounds in these spaces and that's Frédéric. Um, I will link her below. Uh, if anyone wants interior design advice and work done, you have to get in touch with her. She's very gifted and I'll hopefully be showing you more of the loft as I make more videos. Um, but you can see a little bit of it here. So there's still that little part of me, my little self node self that says, you know, this isn't yours. Like you can't enjoy this. You shouldn't. Um, I, like as if I should almost feel guilty, even though there is a sharing of resources here. I am offering my time and love to the cat and I am receiving the benefit of having this incredible space to film my content and do my work. I just wanted to bring that whole story into view for you so you can see how real and deep understanding your North Node sign and house placement is. I was recently on the Rival and Queen podcast because uh, Steve Lund, this 
cutie, um, funny, sweet actor from Schitt's Creek had spoken about his North Node session with me on their podcast. So they had me on to talk about it. And I've had a couple of people reaching out to me that follow me on Instagram that still were not really clear on what it is. And, you know, I just want to say that it's much more than just like, I'm this, you know, I'm a Pisces, I'm dreamy, you know, this is an actual guide and map for living. And I tune into my North Node every day. So if I find myself anxious or sad or feeling lost, I look at where am I in my Scorpio South Node? Where am I involved in some kind of drama or secrecy or I'm not being clear or I'm getting too lost in you know my head and um, escaping through some kind of either spiritual or just avoidant behavior patterns and then i will shift myself into my north node which i can do through taking a walk outside doing things that are simple getting in touch with my body in nature because that brings me back into the material world which is my taurus north node i also know that when i'm feeling off i need to connect with spirit that's my eighth house and then I need to channel whatever is coming through for me mystically and bring that into my business and share it through content with you and through my posts and through my blog and through all these things so that it feeds back into my business and supports my material reality. So this is very real to me. And while I can't explain to you the astrology with the perfect little bow, um, you know, I have a very rational side moon and Aquarius. See, I'm still referring back to it. I think astrology is so ingrained in us, it's very hard for us to ignore it. But what I really can't ignore is how pertinent this information has been for me, how well it works for me when applied, and how powerfully aligned it has been for the people that I know very well. And when I found out their North Node, I was like, of course, this is exactly the direction that they need to be taking. Um, and also for my clients, because most of the time I'm giving North Node consults to clients that I've never met. And I'm maybe I've just given them a tarot reading blind because I don't do the tarot reading, readings in person. And so I'll just be spewing all this information and thinking, God, I hope they resonate with this. I have no idea if they will. And then they will tell me all the incredible tie-ins and synchronicities that it has to their own life. So it's just magical stuff and you know like with any of these things it'll only have so much impact if you leave it in the realm of insights you will find the power in this when you start to practice it through actions and habits and activities and when you feel it in your body and how it's showing up in your life that's where the magic happens it's a very practical thing that's meant to be applied like i said it's a guide for living and doing, um, it, you know, it's our active becoming. It's not just something to think about and, you know, reflect on from a distance. So if you're interested in working with me and finding out about your North Node, you can book a consult on my website. If you're new to working with me, I highly recommend that you get the welcome pack, which is a tarot reading. It's 45 minutes. I will send you the video so you won't be present. I just want your name and email. I don't need to know anything about you. I will do the reading by connecting with both of our spirit guides of the highest truth and integrity. Once you receive your reading, I will be in touch with you to get your birth date, location and information and time, ideally, because that's what you need for the house placement. And then I will schedule the North Node consult with you on Zoom. We'll go into depth on that. I will send you the recording. And then the last thing is the self-healing console where we look at all of these insights that you got from the tarot reading and the North Node. And by the way, those two things, those two sessions tend to coincide really well with each other. There's always really fun coincidences that pop up in the North Node console that kind of confirm the messages that came through in the tarot reading. So that last self-healing console is where we integrate and talk specifics and look at things that are happening into your life and how can we apply all these things that we just uncovered so that you can really put these things into practice. So that's usually the way that clients get started with me and then we continue more on an ongoing basis, one-on-one, um, -on -one, week to week or month to month. But if you, you know, don't know your North Note yet, it's an incredible journey 
And for those of you who have had a session with me, you probably know that I also offer North Node 30 day calendars. So you receive a daily email to your inbox where I will send you a tip on how to practically, practically align with your North Node. So this is very much like and how you eat, how you decorate your apartment, how you dress, how you interface with friends and colleagues. It's real life application so that you can actually feel yourself tuning into your North Node day to day. Thank you for listening as always. Please like, subscribe and share and get the message out about this content if you are enjoying it. I most appreciate it and I look forward to chatting with you again. Thank you.